NASA's $93 billion Artemis program is facing serious delays, and SpaceX just dropped a bombshell solution nobody expected. Internal discussions reveal Dragon, originally built for ISS missions, is being upgraded with deep space radiation shielding, extended life support, and lunar re-entry capabilities. These modifications are so significant that NASA officials are now considering Dragon as a viable alternative to Orion for crew transport. The implications are staggering. Proven technology beating cutting-edge systems. Let's dive right in. To understand why this Dragon upgrade has NASA scrambling, we need to look at the numbers that tell the real story. Since 2020, Dragon has completed over 30 missions with a perfect safety record. Meanwhile, NASA's space launch system has flown exactly once, costing $4.1 billion per launch. Orion, still dealing with heat shield issues that grounded it for months. But here's where the plot thickens. SpaceX engineers weren't originally planning this lunar upgrade. They were actually forced into it by circumstances no one saw coming. Three months ago, internal NASA memos revealed a devastating truth. Artemis III won't launch until 2027 at the earliest. The culprit? Starship's human rating certification is hitting roadblock after roadblock. Each explosion, each failed landing attempt, pushes the timeline further back. NASA suddenly faced a brutal choice. Abandon their lunar ambitions or find a completely different path forward. This crisis created an unexpected opportunity. SpaceX stepped forward with a proposal that caught everyone off guard. They could modify Dragon for deep space missions in just 18 months. Not the typical decade-long development cycle, 18 months. The response from NASA headquarters was reportedly stunned silence, followed immediately by urgent technical reviews. What they discovered changed everything. Dragon's transformation into a lunar-capable spacecraft involves five critical upgrades that sound impossible, but are actually built on proven technology. Each upgrade solves a problem that has plagued space agencies for decades. Revolutionary Radiation Protection Outside Earth's Protective Magnetic Field, cosmic radiation becomes a silent killer. NASA's traditional solution for Orion involved massive shielding that cost billions and added crushing weight penalties. SpaceX took a completely different approach that borders on genius. Instead of bolting on external armor, they're replacing Dragon's existing hull materials with advanced polyethylene-based composites. These materials serve double duty, providing both structural integrity and radiation protection. The same technology already protects astronauts on the International Space Station during dangerous solar storms. The breakthrough? Weight increase is minimal while protection levels match Orion's multi-billion dollar system. It's like getting a bulletproof vest that weighs the same as regular clothing. Life support that defies conventional wisdom. Current Dragon missions last seven days maximum. Lunar missions require at least three weeks of life support capability. Traditional aerospace thinking demands bigger tanks, more equipment, and inevitably, more weight. SpaceX said there had to be a better way. Their solution represents a fundamental shift in spacecraft design philosophy. Instead of simply storing more consumables, they're creating them on board using revolutionary CO2 scrubbing technology borrowed from Starship development. Water recovery systems achieve 98% efficiency, better than the International Space Station. Oxygen generation happens through recycled materials rather than stored supplies. The result transforms Dragon into something resembling a miniature space station capable of sustaining crew for extended periods without the weight penalties that have historically made such missions impossible. The propulsion secret that changes everything. Here's where SpaceX revealed their master stroke, and it's brilliant in its simplicity. Dragon doesn't need massive new engines for lunar orbit insertion. Instead, they're developing a detachable propulsion module that launches attached to Dragon on Falcon Heavy. Think of this module as a specialized space tugboat. It handles all the heavy lifting for deep space maneuvers, translunar injection, lunar orbit insertion, and the critical burn to start the journey home. Once its job is complete, the module detaches and Dragon returns to Earth using its proven systems. This approach costs 90% less than developing entirely new propulsion systems while actually providing superior performance. 
It's the kind of elegant engineering solution that makes you wonder why nobody thought of it before. These technical capabilities enable three distinct mission architectures that NASA is now seriously evaluating. Each approach offers unique advantages while addressing different aspects of lunar exploration strategy. The Orbital Handoff Strategy In this scenario, Dragon launches crew to low Earth orbit where they transfer to a Starship variant operating as an unmanned lunar shuttle. The Starship handles the dangerous deep space portions of the mission while Dragon waits safely in Earth orbit. Upon return, crew transfers back to Dragon for the final journey home. This strategy splits risk intelligently, using each vehicle for what it does best. Starship provides heavy lift and lunar operations capability, while Dragon ensures crew safety during the most critical phase. High-Speed Atmospheric Reentry The Lunar Taxi Approach Falcon Heavy launches Dragon directly to lunar orbit alongside a compact lunar lander. Astronauts transfer to the lander for surface operations, conduct their mission, then return to Dragon's protective environment for the journey home. Total mission duration, 10 days. Total cost, 80% less than equivalent SLS Orion missions. This approach maximizes operational efficiency while maintaining proven safety systems. Dragon serves as both crew transport and safe haven, a mobile base camp in lunar orbit. The return pod strategy. The most ambitious plan treats Dragon purely as a specialized return vehicle. Astronauts ride Starship to the moon for extended surface operations, then board a pre-positioned Dragon waiting in lunar orbit for the return trip home. This strategy maximizes surface time while ensuring crew safety during atmospheric re-entry, historically the most dangerous phase of any space mission. It's like having a dedicated rescue boat waiting while explorers work on a distant shore. The financial implications are staggering and impossible to ignore. Current Artemis missions cost $4.1 billion per astronaut. Dragon-based missions? Approximately $400 million per astronaut. That represents a 90% cost reduction while maintaining equivalent safety margins and mission capabilities. But cost savings represent only part of the equation. Dragon's proven reliability creates scheduling flexibility that's impossible with SLS. Multiple Dragon missions could launch and complete while waiting for a single SLS launch window to open. This scheduling advantage could accelerate lunar exploration by years, enabling sustained operations rather than occasional visits. The implications for scientific research and technology development are profound. Dragon's lunar upgrade wasn't without serious obstacles that nearly killed the entire concept. The heat shield modification alone required 18 months of intensive development and testing. Returning from lunar distances means hitting Earth's atmosphere at 25,000 miles per hour, nearly double Dragon's normal re-entry speed. The physics are unforgiving. At these speeds, atmospheric friction creates temperatures exceeding 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Dragon's original heat shield, while excellent for Earth orbit missions, simply couldn't handle this thermal punishment repeatedly. SpaceX's solution involved developing advanced carbon-carbon composites similar to space shuttle technology, but manufactured using modern precision techniques. Extensive ground testing revealed the upgraded heat shield can handle multiple lunar returns without replacement a crucial capability for sustained operations. Thermal management presented an equally daunting challenge. Lunar missions expose spacecraft to extreme temperature swings from minus 250 degrees Fahrenheit in shadow to plus 250 degrees in direct sunlight. Standard electronics fail catastrophically at these extremes. The engineering team developed hybrid cooling systems that actively manage component temperatures using waste heat from life support systems. It's an elegant solution that turns a problem into an advantage. Excess heat becomes a resource rather than a liability. This Dragon upgrade has triggered unprecedented tension within NASA's leadership structure and broader aerospace community. Traditional contractors spent decades and billions developing Orion's deep space capabilities. SpaceX achieved equivalent performance in 18 months using modified existing hardware. Congressional representatives from districts with major aerospace employers are asking increasingly pointed questions during budget hearings. Why continue funding expensive government programs when commercial alternatives deliver results faster, cheaper, and more reliably? Industry insiders report heated debates during NASA leadership meetings. 
Progressive officials view Dragon's capabilities as vindication of commercial space partnerships and the future of exploration. Traditional voices see it as a direct threat to NASA's historical role in pushing the boundaries of human spaceflight. These aren't just bureaucratic squabbles. The outcome of these debates will determine whether America's space program continues following traditional government-led development models or fully embraces commercial partnerships for deep space exploration. Sources familiar with the program reveal SpaceX could have Dragon ready for lunar missions by late 2025. This timeline stands in stark contrast to Artemis III's 2027 target date, which many aerospace experts privately consider optimistic given current development challenges. This two-year advantage creates previously impossible strategic options for NASA leadership. They could conduct preliminary lunar missions using Dragon while continuing Starship development for more ambitious objectives. Alternatively, they could pivot entirely to Dragon-based architecture and redirect Starship resources toward Mars preparation. The decision point approaches rapidly. NASA must choose between proven technology available now or revolutionary capabilities promised for the future. Each path offers distinct advantages, but only one can receive full programmatic support and funding. Dragon's lunar upgrade represents a fundamental philosophical shift in how we approach aerospace development. Instead of designing completely new vehicles for specific missions, engineers are adapting existing platforms for expanded roles through incremental improvements. This approach reduces development timelines from decades to years while maintaining proven reliability records. Future Mars missions might follow similar patterns. Systematic upgrades to tested systems rather than starting from scratch with unproven designs. The implications extend far beyond NASA's immediate needs. International space agencies are watching these developments closely. If Dragon succeeds in lunar operations, it validates commercial space capabilities for all future deep space missions, potentially reshaping global space exploration strategies. Commercial space companies worldwide are taking notes. The Dragon upgrade demonstrates that innovative engineering approaches can compete directly with traditional aerospace giants, opening new possibilities for international cooperation and competition. NASA faces its most consequential strategic choice in decades over the next six months. Continue betting everything on Artemis as originally conceived, or embrace Dragon's proven capabilities as a bridge to eventual Starship lunar operations. Early indicators suggest leadership is leaning toward a compromise solution. Dragon would handle initial lunar missions and crew transport, while Starship development continues with focus shifted toward Mars preparation. This dual-track approach provides immediate operational capability while preserving long-term exploration goals. The global space industry waits as this decision unfolds. Dragon's success or failure in lunar operations could reshape human space exploration strategies for the next 50 years. Determining whether commercial partnerships or traditional government programs lead humanity's expansion into the solar system. This is exactly why NASA is rethinking everything. Dragon's upgrade proves smart engineering beats massive budgets. SpaceX just outmaneuvered the $93 billion Artemis program with spacecraft modifications costing a fraction of that amount. Dragon's transformation changes everything. Instead of waiting decades for perfect solutions, we're seeing rapid iteration deliver real results. 18 months from idea to lunar-capable spacecraft, that's the new standard. Timeline is accelerating. Dragon's first lunar test in 2025. NASA's final Artemis decision within six months. The space race shifted from nations to engineering approaches. And speed won. Question. Can traditional aerospace adapt to this rapid development model? Or will they get left behind? Share your thoughts below. If this breakdown of space tech breakthroughs got you thinking, hit that like button. For more analysis on developments shaping our space future, subscribe to Space Insider and turn on notifications. Dragon didn't just get upgraded, it redefined what's possible when you refuse limitations. The future of space is happening now, moving faster than anyone expected. Jeff Bezos spent $10 billion in 24 years building Blue Origin. Zero commercial satellites delivered. Rocket Lab, 
with just 1,500 employees, launched 68 missions with 94% success rate, and just secured NASA's $5.6 billion defense contract. The numbers don't lie. Blue Origin's new Glenn has failed twice this year alone, while Rocket Lab pulled off back-to-back -back launches in 48 hours. Even SpaceX is watching nervously as this small company breaks ground on Launch Complex 3 for their game-changing neutron rocket. How did the underdog crush the billionaire's space dream? Let's dive right in. The answer lies in a series of events that unfolded over the past year, revealing just how far Blue Origin has fallen behind. While Jeff Bezos was planning his $30 million Italian wedding, his space company was experiencing its most embarrassing failures yet. On January 16, 2025, Blue Origin finally managed to launch New Glenn after four delays. The mission seemed successful until the landing attempt. Three of seven BE-4 engines failed to reignite sending the $100 million booster crashing into the Atlantic Ocean. For a company that promised orbital flights by 2021, this wasn't just a setback, it was a pattern. Meanwhile, something remarkable was happening in New Zealand. Rocket Lab achieved what Blue Origin couldn't, consistent, reliable launches. Their June 26th and 28th missions proved that operational excellence beats massive budgets. Two perfect launches in 48 hours, from a company with seven times fewer employees. This wasn't luck. It was the result of fundamentally different approaches to aerospace engineering. To understand why Rocket Lab is winning, we need to examine the technical choices that separated these companies from the start. Blue Origin chose complexity. Rocket Lab chose reliability. Blue Origin's BE-4 engines took 13 years to develop and still fail regularly. Each engine costs over $10 million and requires extensive refurbishment between flights. The complexity shows liquid oxygen and liquid methane propellants, intricate turbo pumps, and systems so sophisticated they break under real-world conditions. Rocket Lab took a different path. Their Rutherford engines on Electron use proven RP-1 and liquid oxygen, simple, reliable, and battle-tested through 68 successful missions. When they designed the Archimedes engine for Neutron, they learned from Blue Origin's mistakes. 